Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon. This is Abelardo de la Peña Jr., Director of Marketing and Communications with La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, welcoming you to En Casa con La Plaza. This is uh, La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, our virtual programming. We've been streaming online via Zoom, via Facebook Live since April of 2020. Uh, and on Mondays, uh, as you know, we do our cooking demonstrations uh, in Casa con la Plaza Cocina. If you're on Zoom, please use the comment section to, uh, to comment. Let us know where you're viewing from. You could ask questions via the comment section, the chat, excuse me, the chat section or the Q&A. Uh, and uh, throughout, we'll be asking questions. So feel free. Those of you on Facebook, welcome. And uh, you could use the comment section. Let us know where you're viewing from. Give us comments, ask questions, shout out to each other. This is very interactive. We'd like to know what's going on out there just as you're watching what we're doing here. So again, En Casa Con La Plaza Cocina. And every Monday we have Jimena Martin joining us as the, the host for this session. So come on in. Oh, Gracias, you know. Averado. Thank you. Thank you for the introductions. And so good to see everybody on Monday. Today, we have our first chef from the Valley. Uh, Wendy Seteno is a community chef um, and founder of Guayaba Kitchen, uh, a kitchen which highlights uh, plant-based uh, Chicana cuisine in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. Uh, Wendy is a Waldorf mom of a very picky eater, a seven-year-old, and um, shares her love for, uh, for food and community uh, with her partner and family in the San Fernando Valley. Today, she'll be making beer-battered mushroom tacos. Hi, Wendy. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Como esta? Thank Muy bien, gracias. Thank you for joining us. I'm so excited. I've been a follower from a long, long, long time. And now we have this opportunity for you to share your cuisine with us. So tell us a little bit more about yourself, about Guayawa Kitchen, how you started. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, my name is Wendy Centeno, uh, born and raised in the Valley. I was raised in Pacoima. I'm now in Sil Mar. Uh, so I was, uh, I've always loved cooking. You know, I think it's, uh, it's one of those stories that a lot of us share, you know, getting together with La Familia on the weekends and then just like eating and hanging out. Um, you know, my mom comes from a, from a huge family. So we were very um, into like, hey, let's go to my Tio Jose's house on the weekend and let's make a carne asada and all that cool stuff, you know? Um, so we were really close. My mom worked in the food industry for over 30 years. She um, started as a cocinera in, in the loncheras. Um, so she's a uh, she learned how to cook American food when she came to this country. She, she tells me like, I never even knew what a bagel was. You know, people, she's like, gente está ordenando bagel, que es un bagel. She just knew that she would cut it open, she would prepare it and she would serve it, but she never had it, you know? So her and I, um, like we kind of started uh, just trying new foods, you know what I mean? Uh, trying a lot of like American cuisine and then she would throw in like her, her, um, her Mexican flair. And then eventually she became a, um, a, a driver. She would drive the loncheras, right? So she had her own route. So everything was always food centric. She would come home and she's like, they que said like 300 uh, uh, chile rellenos to sell tomorrow. So food was everywhere. So it was like, it was business, it was pleasure. It was everything, right? Um, I went to school and, and, and I studied English and Chicano studies. I got my degree in English and Chicano studies. I've always loved to write. I love to read. I love art. Uh, and um, so I was like, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a teacher and everything's going to be great. Right. Um, and then let's fast forward to 2009. My tia, who's also like my mom, you know, she raised me. Um, she became very sick with cancer. Um, so um, you know, I would sit with her for hours in, in her hospital bed and just like talk to her about like stuff that she wanted to eat because a lot of the foods that that were given to her in in the hospital were not stuff that she wanted to eat. It was either because she wasn't like no estaba acostumbrada, you know, she wasn't used to those type of flavors and like no le caía bien, you know, um, she was nauseous all the time. So I started doing a lot of research as far as like you know, what foods can I prepare for my tia for her to like enjoy sus últimos días, you know, because she, she didn't have long, the doctors had told us, you know, she doesn't have long. So, you know, enjoy your time with her. So I'm like, I'm going to make sure she eats, you know, 
Um, so I started doing research and just like kind of stumbled onto like plant-based diets and, and, and just took it from there. You know, when she passed away, it really gave me like a new sense of purpose, you know, because she had like so much ganas to like live, you know, and so much, um, so much love and passion for food and, and just like sharing recipes. So I was like, I, I, it really like, um, encouraged me to, to take what I had already learned in, in English and Chicano studies and like, like my, my time in the community, as far as like community organizing and kind of, um, um, mold into something that was very specific for me, which became Guayaba Kitchen, you know, and that's why we focus on, on plant-based foods because, um, you know, what I found in, in, in my research is, you know, food is medicine. Um, so the foods that I would pre prepare for my tia are foods that someone else can share with their tias or their grandmas or their moms and whatnot. So that's, that's where Guayaba Kitchen was born. From that, it's from esa necesidad, you know. That's a really amazing story. I'm sorry about your aunt passing it all, but then that kind of gave birth to new ways of eating, nourishing her in her final days, and then also blossoming into the Guayaba kitchen and spreading that message of health. And what, literally, it's like what you put in your body really makes a difference. Yeah. And how? Yeah, for sure. And it's also really important, I think, that um, that the food that we prepare is is very. Um, is, is relevant to like our taste buds, you know, because I was looking at like, I mean, not to bash on like the, the American Cancer Society, but a lot of the foods that were on there, they were heavily like, it was meat heavy, but it was also like very Western centric. So I was like, my tia's not gonna wanna eat like whatever, like pot roast and potatoes or whatever, cause she's not used to that, you know? So she was like, tengo ganas de lentejas. Like, this is how I make my lentejas, you know? And if you search our YouTube channel, um, at Guayaba Kitchen, um, the, the recipe for lentejas that, that my tia shared with me in the hospital is there. And I invite y'all to go check that out. She's like, I want to eat guayabas, you know? And so I was just finding like little things that I know that she would be able to, to hold down, but that was food that she was accustomed to eating, which is really important in our community, you know? Yeah. And it's in our, it's in our DNA. You know, there's reasons why we can process corn and squash and beans. Those are things go back in time. And sadly, they've been kind of a way people, you know, assimilate, um, kind of forget uh, las verdulagas, things like that. And now we're realizing that we need to go back, go back to those indigenous um, ingredients and, yeah, put them forward and with a twist to contemporary ways like your beer battered uh, mushroom tacos. Yes, yes. Yeah, for sure. We have to keep it relevant. We have to... Um, you know, keep it interesting because I mean, the my whole mission with Wayaba Kitchen is to be able to share recipes with 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 my community. You know, here in the San Fernando Valley, and um, what I was noticing is that a lot of like older señoras and señores that were coming to my classes um, were sick. You know, with chronic diseases that plague our community. You know, and like even now, like COVID has, we have the highest numbers in Pacoima, Silmar. You know. Um, and that that's all my people like those are all people that like I go to the grocery store with and I hang out with you know so it really um, like just meeting up with, with with the elders in my community it really helped me like really hone in into keeping it completely plant-based because when we have a kitchen um, started like we would do like meat dishes and all that and even though I do eat meat I'm not 100% um, vegan like I really encourage people to to um to really eat more plants, you know what I mean? And like you're saying, let's bring back the verdolagas, let's bring back the frijoles and, 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 and the maíz and all that. That's what our DNA was meant to eat and, and that's how we're gonna thrive with those types of food. So tell me a little bit about why, yeah, but did you start up as a pop-up, uh, catering restaurant? Like where, how did that evolve to beginning? Um, yeah, we started as, as um, catering. So I would do catering. Um, and so I had a very limited catering menu and I was really, um, and this was before like, we, we were plant-based, uh, I would focus on like catering office parties and, and then we kind of moved on to doing like bigger galas and big parties and whatnot. Um, so we started from there. Um, and then like we were, we started getting hit up by a lot of different organizations here in the Valley. So like in Eagle family centers, um, men's and just like every little place that had their, um, that had a kitchen, they would hit me up and say, Hey, can you teach a class? Can you teach a class? 
And that's when I started noticing again, going back to, to what we were just talking about, that there was a need for, for, for people to learn more plant-based recipes, you know? Um, so I didn't want to do a disservice to my community by, by teaching them stuff that they already know, like carne en su jugo or carne asada or what have you. Um, cause a lot of the women that were coming into my class and men, um, they already knew how to do that, you know? So then Guayaba Kitchen, with Guayaba Kitchen, I was like, we need to just focus on plant-based. And since then, like we've been um, doing these, now with, with the pandemic, we've been doing everything over Zoom, but I've been um, teaching different levels of, uh, of, of classes, uh, you know, from like little, little kids, from my son was in daycare, we would do cooking classes with like tiny kids up until like grandpa's like 85 years old. Um, teenagers, I, um, a lot of the, most of the years was spent teaching uh, youth how to cook and how to be like self-sufficient and independent. So like when they move out, you know, they're able to create their own meals. Um, so yeah, that's how we started. And now what we're doing is I'm still, I'm still being contracted with different orgs to do, to do classes. Um, and uh, so that takes up a lot of my time, but we do, um, like to offer food pop-ups at least twice a month just so people can can taste um what the chicano cuisine is all about you know so we pop up i get different locations at least twice a month and we offer a very limited menu and a very limited amount of of uh, orders and um you know as soon as we sell out then we close it up and people just uh we do what uh we do a curbless i mean a curbside pickup so people just drive up they text me we take their food, y vámonos. That's awesome. That's really awesome. So at the end, when we're closer, we can give us, you can give us our, uh, your Instagram information for those who are in the Valley who want to go out for a, a, a ride over the weekend to go visit you at a pop-up when it comes up. Sure. Uh, we have some hellos. We have a hello from Bruce from San Clemente. Uh, Isabel uh, Velasquez, hi from Orange County. And Isabel also says, yes, food is medicine. Yes, yes, that's right, Isabel. So please show us how you make your delicious tacos. All right, y'all. So this is one of my favorite recipes. Um, I love working with uh, with adults de la tercera edad, you know, because they come in with so much knowledge. Um, so this is a recipe that I created in one of my uh, adult cooking classes. Um, so it was like uh, 65 years and, um, and older. So women and men would come to my class and they're like, I don't know what to make. You know, today I made this, I today made that. Y quiero comer más vegetales. ¿Qué podemos hacer? Everybody loves tacos, right? So I'm like, I love tacos. I love fish tacos. Um, but let's find something that's a little more affordable and that kind of, that pretty much tastes the same and looks the same. And that is a little better for you. So um, the señoras in my class helped me create this recipe. And um, we just kind of honed it down. And now we have a, a, um, a recipe that I'm sure that y'all can share with everybody también. Um, I sent over the recipe to everyone so, so y'all can have it. Um, but we're going to be making beer battered mushroom tacos, kind of like Baja style tacos, um, where you, um, you know, make a nice little batter and, you know, coat your mushrooms with them. And I'm going to be using, I don't drink beer, y'all, but I just like, they don't sell like one tiny beer, so I had to go buy a big old one. But you can use any kind of beer that you want. I just happen to buy a Modelo. Um, and if you want to omit the beer, even though the alcohol gets cooked out once we are uh, frying them, um, you can use uh, seltzer water or mineral water that doesn't have any um, flavor, or you could just use water. That's fine. So let's go over really quick the, uh, the recipe. Um, so this is going to feed about three to four people, depending on uh, que, que de comelones son. I'm just going to be using uh, baby Bella mushrooms, but you can use any kind of mushroom. This recipe is amazing with like enoki or even white button. Um, I like to use these because they're very accessible. You can find them at any grocery store. And what I already did is I uh, cleaned them, I washed them, I dried them off really well. And then I took off the stem. The stem, I'm gonna use it so I can make like an omelet in the morning. And just a little tip, when you get home, throw your mushrooms in a paper bag. What's gonna happen is if, if you leave them in the container, it's gonna create moisture. And usually vienen tapados, like they're covered with plastic. 
and that's going to create moisture. It's going to make your, your mushrooms very sticky. Um, so when you get home, you don't even have to rinse them. Just throw them into a paper bag and into the fridge. And the paper bag is going to absorb that extra moisture. And you'll, uh, you'll be able to keep your mushrooms for a longer time. So we're going to be using just these baby Bella that I got from Costco. Nada fancy. Um, and we're going to make our... Um, our batter right now. So here I just have all purpose flour. You can also use this recipe is so amazing with garbanzo flour too. Um, so if you're trying to do like gluten free, you can do the exact same recipe, pero con garbanzo, or you can also use almond flour, which works really well. So let's um, work on these mushrooms first. So what I'm going to do to these is I'm just going to um, slice them in half because um, this is going to be um, what we're going to serve on our tacos. So I don't want a huge cap. So I'm going to take, and they're like medium size. They're not tiny ones. I'm going to take these and I'm just going to cut them in half. Right, just like this. And this is, um, if you want to make, feed enough for like three to four people, usually one and a half mushrooms. So three little slices will give you one taco. So then y'all can figure how many tacos you're trying to eat. Um, I'm just gonna make them for me and my partner and we're both comelones. So I'm gonna make like all of these right here. And like I said, these are washed and they're dry already. Okay. So just really quick, a quick um, a slice here. Then I'm gonna put them back in this container where they came from because I'm all about like, let's not dirty too many dishes. So let's stick all of our mushrooms in here and we're gonna season them. In here, I have some seasoning salt. I have a little bit of black pepper, some cumin, some uh, garlic powder and onion powder, and some ancho chili powder. Okay, so we're gonna season our mushrooms just like that. And this, um, because we don't wanna bite into our mushroom and it not taste like anything, right? So I want them to be pretty heavily seasoned, just like that. That's perfect. Okay. Wendy? Yes. Can we marinate those the night before? You could, you could. Um, you can leave them overnight um, and just put them in a, you can leave them aquí mismo in a little container, just cover them. You can okay. do that, that's fine. We have some folks saying hello. Uh, Guadalupe Felix Franco says, love your passion and energy. Thank you. Uh, and also we have, I'm gonna, uh, oh God, Cuitla, okay. Chicari. Um, that's amazing, hermanos. Love seeing your posts on Instagram. And also Yay. we have saludos from Maria Concepcion from, um, from Van Nuys. Awesome. Thanks to everybody for being here. Y'all, y'all inspire me. Y'all keep me going. You know what I mean? So I'm glad to be here. We just have some plain all-purpose flour. Aquí I have a cup. Y luego I'm going to season my flour too, because it's all about making your food taste good, right? You never want to eat anything that's bland. So the, the biggest thing that I tell my students is we have to season our food in layers, right? A lot of times we make the mistake of just like seasoning it at the end. So entonces no más está salado por arriba, but inside no sabe a nada. So we want to make sure that everything's really nicely seasoned. So here's just some plain flour. I have some uh, paprika in here and just a tiny bit of salt and pepper because we already have salt in our mushroom. So I'm just going to salt. I'm going to season my flour here. Just give it a little zhuzh. And here's where our beer comes in or whatever kind of liquid you want to use. This is better if you're, um, if you're using a liquid with like some kind of carbonation in it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of beer at a time. And like I said, I don't drink beer, so it's not, um, it's, this is not really going to change the texture. I mean, the flavor too much if you decide not to use beer, but it does give it a nice little fermented flavor in the background and um, it just tastes good. So I'm looking to create like a, like a pancake batter. Okay, so le vas echando poquito a poquito. And if you end up using too much liquid, if, you're, if your batter is too liquidy, then just add a tiny bit of flour at a time till you get that consistency of like um, a pancake batter. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I already have my cast iron back here heating up with, with oil. That's the first thing you want to do. I'm sorry I didn't bring that up. But the first thing you want to do is get your oil in your pan and you want to get it really, really hot because we are going to be deep frying. We want to have a good amount of oil. So I put about half an inch of oil in there. So that means that this is the bottom of my pan. 
I put my finger in there and that first line on your finger is about an inch. So I filled it up to like halfway, okay? Um, and we are we all have like different types of sartenes, so I'm not gonna give you an exact measurement, but depending on what you're using, use about a half an inch. And I just have grapeseed oil going back here and I have it on low so it can heat up while we're doing our thing. But since we're almost gonna be ready to fry, I'm gonna turn it up to medium and just let it, and you don't have to use a cast iron, you can use whatever frying pan you want. And I like to use grapeseed oil because it has a high smoking point, um, but you can also use like avocado oil or whatever kind of oil you got going on. Okay, so that's looking good. Let me bring you down here so you can see. Now you're gonna see lumps in here and that's okay. No big deal, si tiene lumps. And like I said, that 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 alcohol is gonna cook out, so don't be afraid to feed this to your kids. My my son likes this. He's a very picky eater, like I said. So I'm always trying to like uh, sneak in different ways um, for him to um, eat veggies, you know. So this is one of those. Okay, that's looking really nice. See, it still has some consistency. It's not super watery. Um, and this, Jimena, too, you could make it the night before if you want. You could do something this. like all, you know, the working moms busy or, yeah, you know, we totally. have our kids at home Zooming. Yeah. So it's just nice when it's when everybody, you know, clocks off the Zoom, everything's ready, get the uh, pan ready and then be able to provide a nice. Yeah, exactly. Family. Yeah, you could totally do this the night before. Nothing will happen to this. I would just put it into like a, a glass jar con una tapadera, and then that's fine. It has a nice color, too. Yeah, the chili it's, does it's, a really nice color on it. It's that paprika that's in there that gives it a nice, you know, red color, a little smoky flavor. Like I said, we like to layer in our flavors. But look at these. These are like, these are beautiful. Look at all this stuff that's on these. Okay. So my, I'm going to let my aceitito get a little bit más caliente. And then with this, I mean, you could do whatever you want with this after. Just leave it. I was, I, you know, I'm surprised they don't sell like little cans, but quien va a querer comprar un little one, right? <laughs> okay, ahí está eso. So yeah, this, you could, you know, put it in a jar. If you're going to have leftover, um, you can use it again. This recipe goes really well, even with like, if you want to fry up some cauliflower or um, you could do the same thing. If you want to opt out of frying, you can um, line a baking sheet. Um, throw them in your oven at 450 for about 20 minutes and it, you'll have the same um, effect. You'll still have nice and crispy veggies. You know, I, I have a head of cauliflower and I think I'm going to do that today for dinner. Yeah, do that, do that. And um, I like my cauliflower a little more on the firm side, but if you like it un poquito más squishy, then just, just boil it really quick. Boil the whole thing, throw it into some salted water, then mm -hmm. take it out and just leave it in there once your water is at a rolling boil, mm -hmm. throw it in there for like seven minutes, take it out and dry it up and do the exact same process of like seasoning them and doing all that. And what's the temperature in the oven though? 400. 400, for how long? 400 for about, check them, check them at 15. I mean, every oven is different. Um, check them at 15 and if they're still not where you want them, just leave them in there in increments of seven minutes until they reach what you like. Okay, so vamos a ver si our aceite is hot enough. So you want, whenever you're deep frying anything, you want it to be super hot because otherwise your food's gonna be chilling in the oil and just absorbing it and we don't want that. We want our food to, to get in there and get cooked quick when we're frying it, right? So let's see si ya está, ya está calientito. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip my um, mushroom in here. And I already have a fork and I'm just gonna coat it just like that. Okay, so let's take that over here. And then I'll take my uh, computer back there to show y'all también um, what it looks like. But obviously my computer, you know, I'm teaching all week so it's all greasy and I'm, I'm surprised it's still alive. Okay, so you see that? No se oye mucho. So that means that I need to turn it up as soon as I put my mushroom in there, I should be able to hear something. Está muy calladito, so that means my oil is not hot enough. I also have my comal going back here. Of course, this tastes really bomb if you make your tortillas by hand, but we ain't got it like that today, y'all. But 
you can either um, go to your favorite uh, tortilleria and buy yourself some fresh ones. If you're here in the valley, I really recommend that you check that you check out um, uh, este tortilleria La Talpense, which is in San Fernando. Their masa is amazing, like for tamales, but their tortillas are so good. So go over there. I think they sell their dozen for like five bucks or something. Y las hacen bien grandotas. So if you really want a, a really nice treat, definitely check out your local tortilleria. Wendy? Yeah. Okay. Um, a question by Kimberly Wong. Have you ever cooked these in an air fryer? You know what? I do not own an air fryer, so I have never. Um, but I'm sure, I mean, I don't know if there's any air fryer experts out there, but I'm sure whatever can be fried can be thrown into an air fryer. I mean, we'll put it, we'll put it out to the universe. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> right. They'll come, they'll come cooking in. They'll come with zoom. Yeah. Um, this says, hi, Wendy. Uh, it's been a while. Can't wait to try this. Ed, tell us. Yes. Try it out y'all. And like I said, uh, a mushroom and a half will give you one taco. I'm going to be using the full size tortillas. Um, another, another plug here. I went to my uh, local carniceria, which is my favorite Ziggy's carniceria. And they have these tortillas that come from Watsonville. They're called La Rosa. They're so good, y'all. I know a lot of times we've had tortillas that like, I'm not going to name any names, but they're just gross. You know, they're like very acidic and they just, the quality of the corn that they use is not good. So these tortillas, La Rosa, um, they're 100% natural, but uh, they are not easily found here. I've only been able to find them there at Ziggy's Meat Market in San Fernando, um, but they also make tortillas de harina. So when I go out to Ziggy's and get my, uh, get my chorizo, I also buy like a bunch of tortillas. Wendy, one more time, can you let us know what's the name of the tortilleria again? Yes, it's called La Rosa. Let me show you. It's called La Rosa. And, um, you know, for, for being a packaged tortilla, they're really, really good. They, they use um, good quality corn. Um, and there's like very limited ingredients in here. And they're from California, they're from Watsonville. I'm gonna raise and, my fingers. Go ahead. I'm sorry, and Ziggy's, what, uh, what street is Ziggy's on? What is that? What street is Ziggy's on? Oh, it's on McClay. McClay. It's on McClay and like seventh or I was Yeah, and they're a, they're a local family here from from Silmar, um, and they're just uh, their artisanal cuts at their store. Their their meat is own high quality. I have a slotted spoon here. If you do not have a slotted spoon, you can use a. You hear that sound now? That's what I'm talking about. If you don't have a slotted spoon, you can use a fork and a knife to, to flip them over. Um, and see, the reason why I mentioned for you to dry them off is if they're really moist, um, one, the seasoning is gonna fall off of them. And then two, um, they're gonna be popping in here. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of tossing some oil on top of them and just kind of giving them a little flip. Let them, let them cook up. Let's make our, um, let's make our aguacate crema, y'all. Super simple. Some cilantro into my blender. And I Wendy? just have here. Mm -hmm. Wendy, I'm sorry. Um, Maria Concepcion is asking, can I use eggplant instead of mushroom? What yes, can I can. add? To yep, you sure can. Yeah, that would be really good. I have crema oaxaqueña here. You can use any kind of uh, whatever crema you like. This is just from my local store here, crema oaxaqueña. I'm gonna get half an aguacate. And I like it spicy y'all, so I'm gonna add um, half of a serrano and I'm just gonna do a rough chop on it. Throw it in there. Just a tiny bit of lemon. We'll provide y'all with the recipe. So I know I'm going a little fast here, but you, um, we will provide y'all with the recipe para que la puedan hacer en su casa. A little bit of salt. This is just pink Himalayan salt. My mushrooms are doing their thing. 
a tiny bit of agua. And then I'll add more if I need to. I don't want it to be too watery. So I'm going to throw this onto my blender. And just blend that up. Okay. Wendy? Yes. For those folks who may not have access to Oaxacan crema, would sour cream be okay? Yeah, you can use any kind of sour cream. If you want to make it vegan, then you can do it with your um, cashew crema, but any kind of sour cream will work. Okay, and that's my aguacate crema that's going to go on top of my tacos. Yum. Beautiful. Okay, and I think my mushrooms are pretty much done. I'm going to turn this off and I'll show you what they look like. So with my slotted spoon, I'm just taking off all this oil and I can reuse this oil just one more time. So I'm going to um, cook up the rest of my mushrooms later with this same oil. And I like to use a cast iron because it really heats up nice evenly. But if you do not have a cast iron, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. So look at these beauties, they're hot. They look like chicharrones. I don't know if you can see. They're beautiful. There's, I can hear them. I don't know if y'all can hear that. They're hot, 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 hot. Okay, so since we are doing like Baja style um, tacos, we wanna have a nice little slaw to go with it. So I'm just gonna flip over my board here to the clean side and we're gonna make a quick um, slaw which is a cabbage base. So let me bring y'all down here. So you can show, I'm sorry, can you show us the cooked mushrooms again, please? Folks oh, are asking. Check it out, y'all. So they have a nice color to them. They're pretty golden. I mean, I like mine like extra crispy, so they're... Some crunch. Yeah, and you can hear like it has a nice crunch to them too. So you saw that we cooked them pretty quick. They weren't in there very long. I want to say like maybe three minutes, three to four minutes on each side, and then that's it. They're done. I have a, I try to find the smallest, tiniest cabbage, and here it is. So I'm going to use half of this cabbage. Now you can use a mandolin to um, slice this up, but we're just going to do it the old school way with the cuchillo. So I have a half here, I'm gonna quarter it and I'm just gonna come in here and really thinly slice this. Okay, so notice my knife is not doing that. That actually really dulls out your knife. So you wanna keep the tip of your knife down on your board and then just let your wrist do all the moving. Just up and down. And I'm only gonna use a quarter because I'm not making that many. But if you're gonna, if you're feeding a bigger family, then for sure use more. Um, and this slaw keeps really well in the refrigerator, so you can kind of serve it with other stuff as well. Okay. And then next we're gonna use a cebolla morada. I like to use a purple onion or red onion with this recipe because it's not as strong as like a white one or a golden. So I cut my onion just in half from end to end. Always cut your onion north to south pole because that's gonna leave you with a piece that you can either do a dice or you can do slices or what have you, okay? So we're gonna do some nice little slices. Media luna, half moon. So we'll start off by just cutting off the little, um, not, the, not the rabito, the stem, but the other part and just really thin slices. Now I'm going to use for this amount of cabbage for this quarter cabbage, I'm going to use about half of this onion. I like onion y'all. Throw that in there. Okay. And um, like I said, I like it spicy. So you can um, use an habanero for this or you can use the other half of your serrano that you used for your um, crema but I'm gonna use an habanero. And this is very spicy. 
but still I'm gonna use the whole thing. Thinly sliced. So first we'll do slices like this. And then I'll go over it with my knife to do some dices. So if anybody from the Valley is listening in um, and is interested in taking a class, we're um, offering classes right now through Tia Chuchas. Um, hit them up so y'all can sign up for them. Um, there are classes for youth. Um, so if you have someone like a high school student that's interested in learning um, how to cook, send them my way. So we've partnered in the past with Tia Chucha. They, um, in April is like a poetry month. Yes. So we always partner with them and we have poetry sessions at La Plaza. Oh, awesome. And, and also besides teaching, you're teaching classes, I mean, they have wonderful books. So yes. go on their oh, website yeah. and check out their um, bilingual, Spanish, um, culturally relevant um, books. Totally, and, support, yes. and support local. You know, Amazon's great, but let's support local. Yeah, Tia Chuchas has all kinds of cool cookbooks. If you want to check them out, you can order them online and they'll ship them to you or you can go pick them up. Um, I have some cilantro here, just a tiny bit. I took off the, the rabitos, the stems. Usually I don't, um, but because we're going to eat this raw just out of here, I'm going to keep these stems for when I make salsa because there's still tons of flavor in here. Um, but I have my, just the leaves, and I'll just do a rough chop. Notice how I'm keeping my fingers tucked para no cortarme. And my knife is super sharp, so that is the safest way to have your knife is to be super sharp so you don't cut yourself. Because if you have a dull knife and you're trying to cut something, then it's going to make all your ingredients wobble around and then you have a greater risk of getting cut. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Leticia Perez, uh, she says, it looks uh, rico so far. It's a change from fried meat like chicharron, my favorite. Thank Definitely you. taking notes. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? You If you can make the chicharron style, if you get some um, some oyster mushrooms and you do the same kind of batter, um, then they'll come out like chicharrones. Right. Okay, so in the last but not least is my mom's limones from Pacoima. She's had her lemon tree for like 20 years. And um, the valley, you, you just see like citrus orchards everywhere. Um, you know, before the valley um, was, super populated. We just had arboles everywhere, right? And they're still around. So that's our slaw right there. And if you want to add even a bit more color, you can throw in some sliced tomato in here. That's looking lovely. Ooh, and it smells spicy, y'all. That habanero is no joke. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, al gusto. Again, some lo nice little pink Himalayan salt with all those added minerals that come in it. Always good. Give that a little mix. Add a tiny bit more limon. And this slaw, you can kind of put it on anything, y'all. Okay, that's looking good. Muy bien. There it is. Okay, raw, raw veggies are um, the way to get a lot of nutrients out of them, right, is to eat them raw. And a lot of our foods, believe it or not, a lot of our traditional foods are very, very healthy, right? It wasn't until um, the conquest and we were introduced to foods that are now making us sick, right? So muchas de nuestras comidas originales um, are super good for us, right? And especially raw. And a, a lot of our original recipes were, were plant-based, right? So I'm going to take my beautiful tortillas and I'm going to make two tacos right now para que vean. And if you really want to get legit with it, Take some of this aceitito and I'm just going to twirl my tortilla around a little bit to kind of coat the sides. And I'm going to put that on my preheated comal. And this is a disclaimer. It's a little messy. You're going to get oil on your, on your estufa, but just wipe it off as soon as you're done and you are good to go. Does anybody have any other questions for today's recipe? I do. Yes. When is your next when is your next pop up? Our next pop up is this weekend. We're going to be doing a um a taquero mucho taco kit for Valentine's Day. So, we're going to be making um handmade tortillas and they are going to be Valentine's centric. So, we're going to make them pink 
We're going to be using betabel juice to, to make them pink. So they're going to look really cute. And I'm going to be offering different um, toppings to or fillings to put into your tacos that you can share with, you know, your Galentine or your Valentine on, on Sunday. So that will be on Sunday. And um, you just need to check out our Instagram at Guayaba Kitchen. And it has all of our info for any upcoming classes or any um, food pop-ups that we're going to be having as well. Flipping my tortilla with no uh, pinzas. That's how you know we OG, y'all. That's how you know. Okay, let me get a nice plate. All my plates are yellow. I like yellow. I have another question. How how did you guys pick up the name Guayaba? Guayaba. Um, I grew up going to Mexico every summer. I was fortunate enough that my mom like worked her butt off and she would just take us to Mexico every summer. And my family's from the rancho. My grandma's kitchen is like outdoors and she has like trees everywhere. And I would, um, after we would make lunch, I would wash the plate at, in La Pila, right? Um, which is, what's a pila? I don't even know how to say it in English. Pila is like the, it's not the drum, is it? A pila is like a, it's like a, it has to lavadero where you would wash the dishes and then it was like a big thing of water that you would just kind of scoop it in. So, um, like I said, my grandma lived in the rancho outdoors and there was always a guayaba tree, right? And, and it would rain a lot. So just like that smell of guayabas and like just having the, the, that smell and like the mercados and then just like the, the, the taste of it, it just like sends me back to like my grandma's house, right? So guayaba kitchen is, 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 is that like me trying to take pe people back to like, you know, grandma's kitchen to like our comidas originales, you know? So for me, that's what guayabas do. So there's no better way to describe my cuisine than like guayabas, you know? That's a really sweet story. That's really nice. And how fortunate you were to be with your grandmother and live those experiences and yeah. pass them down to your little one and tell those stories and also let us know about those stories. I think yeah. that's what makes our programming interesting because of those really unique thoughtful, loving family stories. Yeah, for sure. One more thing, uh, yep. Maria Concepcion is asking, do you have a cookbook? I do not have a cookbook um, yet, but it's something that for sure in, in the future, we're looking into creating um, a cookbook of recipes um, comprised of, of just like different, um, different senoras that I've come across and, and you know, sharing their recipes as well. So it's definitely in the works. All right, how do you put that deliciousness together? Let's do this. Okay, so I have my tortillas here. I'm gonna start with two tacos. Um, and see, I'm just kind of putting my tortillas here side to side. Let's put our three pieces of mushroom. I mean, you could go away, you could get away with two, but three is better. Que estén bien serviditos. Okay. And then I'm gonna take some of this delicious slaw. And this, if you make this the night before, it's even better because it's going to be marinating. It's going to be like doing its thing. Okay. So I'm going to take some of this spicy cabbage slaw, placing it over my mushrooms right here. And then don't forget about this aguacate crema that we made. So this, when you put it away, I mean, you could put it in an airtight container. It's going to change color from the outside. It's going to get dark because oxidiz oxidization, but it'll still be bomb. When you mix it around, it'll be bright green, but you can leave it in a container like this and then just cover it with plastic, but make sure that the plastic is hitting the top of your, of your salsa or your crema. That way um, it'll reduce the brownness of it. So that's beautiful. Let's bring this over here and that's my chihuahua in the background. She's deaf and she's blind. So even if I tell her to be quiet, she don't care. I'm sure she can smell the tacos. She can. That's why she's here. Okay. And then so just a little bit of a uh, limon right there. And we have our delicious tacos. Super quick, right? I think I'm going to make them tonight. I do have a cauliflower and I do have a pot of oil. So I think I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to make them and I'm going to tag you on Instagram yes, so you yes. can see my, my cauliflower. Yes. And you know, another good recipe for cauliflower, Jimena, is if you cut it up really fine, like cauliflower rice, and then you um, season it with a lot of these same seasoning, salt, pepper, comino, oregano, 
um, and throw them into your um, oven at like 400, 450, and then just roast them. Really good for tacos too. No, I, I did a paella. Cauliflower is my new friend. Oh, yes. And yes. then so cauliflower, another thing I want to do is um, cauliflower kimchi rice with an egg. There you go. Yummy. So I'm, trying to, I'm trying to work in those flavors and still oh, be healthy. Oh, that's amazing. I love kimchi. Look how beautiful that is, y'all. <sighs> <laughs> and that's it. That's it for today's recipe. Super simple, super flavorful, and like budget friendly. A lot of the stuff like we already have lying around, like everybody has cilantro and chiles and onions all the time. Um, just go out there and get you your mushrooms. And I really encourage you to experiment with different mushrooms just to kind of see what you prefer. But like try some enoki or try some, um, some king oyster, um, oyster mushrooms, and they'll be really good. That sounds amazing. It's been so wonderful to meet you. And I look forward to meeting, working and working with you in the future for La Cocina. Uh, there is going to be a plant-based series. I would love for you to come and teach a class uh, once we're open, COVID friendly, everybody, if not through these Zoom sessions um, throughout the year till we're safe to all meet together and cook together and eat together. For sure. Sí, my gracias. And I love yeah, the concept of the intergenerational cooking, which is so important. We learn so many different ways and it's a nice way for the family, when familia, to start juntos and creating these lovely food memories. Exactly, yes. Thank you for having me and thanks everybody for tuning in to our demo. And if you have any questions or if you're kind of having a diff difficult time recreating this, Hit me up on Instagram at Guayaba Kitchen, and I will walk you through the process. Again, muchísimas gracias, Wendy. Éxitos. I love the idea of your Valentine taco off with the pink shells and all. That's awesome. Ahora se la paso mi compañero, Abelardo. Take it away. Thank you, Jimena, and thank you, Wendy. That was that looks delicious, and like you said, it looks pretty simple. I think even I could handle something like that, but it does. Uh, I could smell it from here. It, 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 very, muy sabroso. Anyway, we have very question, important question from Francisco Javier Sola. What's the name of the puppy? Oh, her name is Olin, um, but we call her Oli. Okay. Yeah, and uh, she actually, she's going to be turning 14 at the end of the month. She's an old, old dog. We've had her for, since she was like eight weeks. Well, may she live even, as long as she can. Oh, I'm uh, <laughs> Isabel Velasquez, thank you for sharing your talents with us. Uh, Shelly Stevens uh, watching on Facebook. This was great. Loved her, her energy, knowledge, and enthusiasm as I did. I'm sure all our other viewers did as well. Uh, Christina Cales or Kales uh, from Facebook thank, uh, on Zoom. Thanks. This saved me three to four hot round trip. There you go. <laughs> Hour, excuse me. And Kimberly Wong, thank you. Can't wait to try it. Yay. Okay. We are going to uh, send an email with, uh, with the recipe. So all of you on Zoom, uh, check it out. We'll also post it on our Facebook page, uh, the recipe, and on our YouTube. We have recorded this, and we will be sharing with you on our YouTube page, at La Plaza LA, also on our website, lapca.org. And of course, it lives here on our Facebook page, if you're on Facebook, at lapca.org as well. And I, I mentioned we had, what, 20 or so, uh, it got 33. This is number 34. Wow. So, yeah, we've been uh, doing some great work here. All of you have been helping out, uh, all you great chefs, restaurant owners, caterers, food historians. Uh, it's all here on En Casa Con La Plaza Cocina, which, uh, it, like I mentioned, every Monday at 3.30, you could catch the next uh, the, the schedule. It's on our website at lapca.org. And here I had it all set. Next Monday is we're off President's Day. So we'll be taking the uh, some well-deserved time off. And I hope all of you do too. But on the 22nd, el 22 de febrero, agua chile verde de camarón en español con Chef Luis Cardenas de la Medina Cocina Abierta en Baja California. So we've done several of our sessions here in español. We've done several, uh, most of them in English, but today I think was the first one in, in puro uh, Spanglish. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm all about, Spanglish. Oh man, that, that, <laughs> thank you so much for that. Well, um, we, we continue in Casa Con La Plaza this, this week. Uh, speaking of course of Tia Chuchas, we're bringing on Michael Centeno from Tia Chuchas this Wednesday to talk about COVID, about art and culture in the time of COVID. 
So he'll be joining Kathy Gallegos from Avenue 50 Studios. He'll been doing some tremendous work, community outreach, food classes, poetry readings, art exhibits, and more online during this time of COVID as we've had to um, adjust. But uh, we bring you these sessions. And then on Friday, La Musica Tropical in LA with Guido Herrera Yance, a great friend of La Plaza de Cultura y Artes who has, for the past few years, has curated our Summer of Salsa series at La Plaza and also has brought the Cuban American Music Festival. Uh, and so he'll be talking about his uh, um, career in music and event production, all the bands that he's worked with, Los Van Van, uh, El Gran Combo de Puerto Rico, and muchos, muchos más, and also showing clips. So you'll be able to uh, dance along one or two minutes at a time with some of the great bands that we brought on. So that's this Friday, but of course, join us again. And in Casa con la Plaza, LAPCA.org is our website, Facebook at La Plaza LA, and uh, YouTube as well. You could catch this playlist of all our La, la Cocina uh, uh, sessions. And I think I've, I've spoken enough, and now I'm going to go and try to find something as great as that was. Adios a todos. Thank you to our sponsors, Kaiser Permanente and PepsiCo. Y nos vemos a las, hasta la próxima. Bye-bye. Thank Gracias. you, Wendy. Thank you, Jimena. Thank Bye. you.